This afternoon at Klein's Garage, we're going to be setting the ring gap for our rings. I'd ordered a replacement set of rings. I have 84 millimeter pistons. My piston wall clearance is four thousandths, which might be a little controversial for a boost setup. This motor was assembled years ago by a reputable machine shop out in California, and uh, when I tore it down to put heavier duty wrist pins in it, I found that the piston wall clearance was only one and a half thousandths, which I think is extremely tight for a high boost setup. This motor made uh, just shy of 800 horsepower, and uh, surprisingly, the, the pistons didn't expand enough to grab the wall. Um, that could partially have to do with me running E85 instead of gas. I think if I ran gas, it, the cylinder temperatures would have been a lot higher and it would have expanded the pistons more and it would have been a problem. I'm fortunate that I uh, didn't have a problem. So, anyway, I replaced the uh i'm replacing the rings they were the standard ring set for my pistons that they recommended and i'm um, extremely disappointed in in these rings it's kind of it's kind of absurd to tell you the truth uh let's see here so this is a part number i ordered right off the je website all right it says nitrate nitrite which is actually nitride n-i-t-r-i-d-e which I'm okay spelling error whatever then I'm looking at the dimensions 1.2 times 1.2 times 2.8 these are not 1.2 times 1.2 by 1 by 2.8 these are 1.0 by 1.2 by 2.8 so there's two errors on on just on this label alone so I go to fit the these rings and check the ring gap the top rings fine the second ring was 30 thousandths right out of the box across all four cylinders my bores are perfectly straight perfectly true checked it with uh, a pretty decent quality digital bore gauge and uh, the machine shop did as well bores are straight bores are consistent within a few tenths all the way across all four cylinders so these rings are way oversized and when I called JE, JE says, oh, I've seen them a lot bigger than that. Okay, well, that doesn't mean it's right. So then I said, well, I'm assuming you don't make a ring and a file to fit ring kit then. I was told, no, we don't. So I'm doing some research and I find, I'm looking at 1.2. And then I look at the actual specs on the website. That's when I realized that they're not, it's not 1.2 by 1.2. It's 1.0 by 1.2. But anyway, I don't want to ramble on too much, but I was told we don't make a file to fit ring ring set. Okay, I'm thinking, all right, I'm just going to go with a different manufacturer. But then I get searching around, and look what I find. Hey, a file to fit ring set for 84 millimeter pistons made by JE. Apparently, they do make them. This one actually... Uh, has the sizes the specifications for the rings listed properly so I guess the person who made this knew what they were doing so you can see it's listed as a 3.307 which is 84 millimeters and then down here it shows bore 3309 3309 they're they're giving you a little bit oversized rings to allow uh, to, to file to fit to make them exact my bore is uh, 3311 it's four thousandths over 84 millimeter to compensate for the piston to wall for four thousand piston to wall minimum these are chrome faced rings the original ones were not they were just standard tool steel uh, nitride rings if you can see this in the in the video or not you can see on the end of the ring it, there is a an, an industrial chrome that's on the end of the ring the top compression ring has that the second compression ring does not but the oil rings do all right I have a ring that I already have ground and a ring that's right out of the box so you can see here 
this this ring this one was a tiny tiny little bit smaller than the the previous one which it's not a problem they're foul to fit which is what you want you want them tighter so you can take material off so this one was actually 12 the one I put in before was uh, four, 14 barely fit in it it may have been a little bit smaller than 14 but this one 12 thousandths fits in it so what we want to do is we want to go up to 21 thousandths we might even go 22 I don't know so 21 fits in the next one so if you can see pull this one out what you want to do is you want to make sure that the ring is completely square in the cylinder that'll make a change change it a lot so what I did is I took the piston and I pushed it down a little bit with a piston and then once I did that uh, a friend of mine Jerry Paterka told me just take a socket and run the socket all the way around the top that'll show that you're perfectly square in the cylinder because you do have some piston to wall clearance and even if you use the piston if you push it all the way the piston all the way down in then you know you know it's square but if you just run the ring run the a socket around the top or another object that's smooth it's not going to scrape everything all up you can set it so I filed this from that ring filer and as you can see we got 21 thousandths clearance what you want to do is take all of your rings and lay all of your rings out on the table on the table keep them in order so things don't get mixed up I laid each of the rings out so cylinder one two three four what you want to do is you want to keep the piston with the same as well so everything's consistent then you get all your rings filed and then you take each piston and put all your rings on for that specific one then match that to the rod that you have marked already as well so we got one done what I'm going to do is show you the next one this is for cylinder two this is the setup I have here this is a pro form ring filer so what you what you want to do is you always want to keep the ring in a position where you file this one end don't file both ends one ends already finished so you don't want to be filing back and forth why would you do that you always want to stay on one side leave one factory edge which is which is perfectly square perfectly deburred and good so another thing that's critical is you always want to make sure that you turn the handle if you have a manual one like I do I'm not rich so I'm a powered one but anyway you always want to make sure you turn it away so it spins away from the chrome ring face if you look at the chrome ring face here if you go this way with the handle if you're cranking it that way you have a possibility of grabbing the chrome and pulling the chrome chipping the chrome off the ring then the rings junk you have to throw it in the garbage so take it line the ring up to the dowel pins put a little bit of pressure not much a little bit and take a little bit of material off very very little then take that ring put it back in your bore like I just showed you use your piston to get it close to square in a socket to get it perfectly even all the way around then go with your feeler gauge and check your your clearance you want to do this in very small stages it's very easy to take too much material off you take too much material off now you're buying new rings again and you're starting all over so that's the process of doing it you want to do that with all of your all of your rings I recommend doing laying them all out doing all your top rings then go through and doing all your second rings then do all your oil rings because this is tool steel the other ones are uh, cast or nodular I'm not sure if they're nodular iron or cast iron but they have different density of material so they're gonna you know they're gonna grind at a different rate so 
you know do all your top ones they're going to grind consistent then do your next one do your uh your cast rings your second compression ring that's going to take material is going to come off that a little bit easier because it's less dense it's not as hard so you want to uh do those next and then one through four oil rings then once you're done when you file these on the back edge you're gonna have a little burr maybe even on the bottom too because you see how this is going you're grinding in a direction like that so you want to go with a stone 200 grit stone or something and just make sure those edges are flat always file or grind away from the ring face you don't want the burrs out here you want a clean edge that's your ceiling edge so that's how you file fit a set of rings all of your rings have markings on them the markings always go up as always have fun stay safe <laughs>